I hope that, you know, in kind of leading the charge by putting my greatest shames and insecurities on display right next to theirs, that it shows, you know, the power in that and that we don't have to be Mm. anything other than who we are and that we don't have to live a future that is anything less than what we dream for ourselves, despite anyone Mm. who might have told you otherwise. G'day and welcome to the White Travel Podcast. Where Kaz and Craig make peace, your hosts, ready to help you travel more and create better memories, no matter your chosen lifestyle. Hi guys, welcome to the Wide Travel Podcast. It's me flying solo again today and I'm so excited to have my friend Kelly Lewis join us. You are going to love everything that Kelly shares with us because she is a travel industry maven in the world of women and travel and she's the founder of so many amazing things, Go Girl Guides, the Women's Travel Fest and Damesley. And we're going to talk a little bit about that but also her new book, that's coming out. Tell us she can't. Inspirational stories of unstoppable women. I'm so excited for that, Kelly, and I'm so happy to have you on the podcast. Welcome. Woo, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I always love to see you and to speak with you, so I could not be more honored to be here. Yeah, and we've known each other for a long time. <laughs> since the very we are the old goats, as I think people like to call us. <laughs> It's true. The, Back when the internet oh, was. <laughs> I'm a yep, smaller place. Starting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just starting. And then I think we met in real life for the first time when we both went to the White House Travel Summit many, many years ago. Yeah. And what we're a still cool, rolling. It's a cool way to meet someone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a ton of fun. And I've just, uh, well, first of all, before we dive into all the amazing things you do, Let's uh, hear a little bit about your background um, and your life in travel. And, I mean, you've been immersed in travel for a very long time. So how has it evolved as your life has changed and why is it such a central part of what you do? Yeah, so I grew up in Hawaii and um, was certainly always curious about what was beyond the shore? I mean, it's yeah. very much my Moana moment, like cue my Moana. <laughs> I, I wanted to know what lies beyond the reef, right? So I can remember yep. being super young and sitting in my friend's backyard on her swing set and thinking like, I wonder what other countries are like. I wonder what other places are like. I wonder you know, what other cultures are like. And so I always had this curiosity for the world, but I did not grow up with a family who traveled. I mean, first of all, we had six people in our family and we lived in Hawaii. So it was like really not feasible financially for us to travel anywhere. And so I had this kind of internal wanderlust that was not supported anywhere, but I knew that one day I wanted to go out and explore the world. I just didn't know how or when that would happen. So I ended up um, going to college at the University of Arizona for a journalism degree. And That's kind of when I started, you know, coming into my own, living on my own. I was out of the home that I grew up in, um, which unfortunately was difficult (laughs) to um, my, the environment that I was raised in was pretty abusive at times and, um, and really difficult. And so, you know, when I was finally out of my own, it was kind of like, all right, let's, let's fulfill all of those dreams because no one's going to tell you that you can't do it. <laughs> like, this is your chance. So, mm-hmm. and yeah. then it, it didn't, I actually didn't get started traveling until I was like 22 after I had graduated college because I couldn't afford to study abroad and I mm-hmm. always really wanted to. Um, and so from 22 to 32, I went to like 75 countries and seven continents. I just like slung wow. shot myself out into the world. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> all right, world, let's go see what's out there. You know, it's here I am. <laughs> so it's been a whirlwind. Yeah. I mean, we have very similar backgrounds. I think Australians are kind of like you there on the island. Similar thing is what lies beyond here. And because, yep. you know, Australia is so isolated. That's why I think so many Australians are curious about the world. So true. And what's funny is like one of the first places I really went to was New Zealand. 
So I moved to New Zealand oh, right. yeah, yeah. With, on a working holiday visa, and I got a job working for a company that did Lord of the Rings tours, which was so fun. Oh, my God. That is so people awesome. Would come to the shop wearing, like, robes and speaking Elvish. Oh and, like, it was just such a fun, you know, my, I had a friend come to visit at the time, and she was like, you, you're living, like, this Peter Pan lifestyle. Like, this isn't real. And I was like, what are you talking about? I have bills. I have rent. I have roommates. Like, it's totally real. But it was really my first introduction to – what a life of travel could be like. And I really quickly realized, you know, you go someplace and it feels really, really scary because you don't know anyone there and you don't know what's waiting for you there and you don't know if it's going to be good or if it's going to be bad. And um, what I realized is that it's ultimately all about the people that you meet. So I lived in a house with like seven mm. people in a two bedroom house like four guys that lived in the basement, two people that Love lived it. in band. I mean, it was such a traveler's house, but those people really got me excited about other parts of the world because they would come back and talk about, you know, Argentina or the time that they taught English in China. And it really opened up my brain. And I was like, wait a minute. Like for the first time, I actually had this realization that like I could get on a plane today and be across the world like by this evening you know <laughs> like or by tomorrow morning like yeah. anything felt possible and I think sometimes we forget like yep. how possible it is to actually make yourself to actually travel you know it's just really getting on the plane and doing it and so it, it took away a lot of fear and yeah, it I think so many me. Yeah, so many people get caught in the hows and the everything that could go wrong and I think I think if only people understood that it's not as difficult as it seems, that if you, if you just go, yeah. that you kind of figure it all out as you go along because you can't plan for anything. I mean, COVID should have taught us all that by now, but when you're travelling like that when you're on and when you on your own and you're working in other countries, and you could probably touch on this and talk about it in regards to your book that's coming out, but it just empowers you so much and teaches 100%. you that, hell, you're unstoppable. A hundred percent. I mean, there are times in my life now where I'm having like a really bad day and then I'll be like, girl, you got this. Like you hiked Machu Picchu, you know, like, yes. <laughs> you can do this. <laughs> totally. You can pay this bill. You can, you know, whatever the challenge is, that's really stressful. Yeah. There are moments like anchor memories of adventures that I've had around the world that remind me that I am powerful and strong and capable and that I can if I so choose. So and that's really, I mean, especially having come from an environment where that was not the messaging that I was told, I think mm -hmm. that's why travel became so important to me because it was like my way to tap into my own sense of personal power. And to prove to myself that, like, mm. I actually could do whatever I wanted. You know, it might be hard. It might be sticky. It might be challenging. It might be hot. Whatever it is, it might not always be comfortable, but I could do it, you know? And so I think for me, that's what traveling gave yeah. me. Was that yeah, sense of, I 100% you know, agree. And I was the same. Yeah. Yes. Which is so, yeah. Which is and I, a, I wasn't raised with that either. Yeah. And it's so important, I think, for everyone to get that message wherever they can. Travel is mm -hmm. one great way of doing it. But, you know, there's lots of ways to, to find your own personal strength and power. But I think a lot of times for women in particular, you know, <laughs> we're always told, like, it's too dangerous. What if you can't do it? Mm. What if it's good? You know, what if it's unsafe? And you really can't ever plan for everything. So I think you know, every day that I was out in the world and I was doing these hard things that seemed really difficult to other people, even I would come home and be like, God, I'm a badass. Like, <laughs> look what I just did. You know, I, yes. found, I found the right <laughs> bus in China with no translator. You know, <laughs> I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. That is the most difficult thing in the world to do is get around <laughs> China, not knowing Totally. Oh my gosh, I'll never forget looking at the the train station timetable and it was all in characters and, and had my little book out. But you couldn't match the characters. It was just too difficult and no one spoke English. It was like, okay, something will appear in a minute and help us and someone did and, yep. and you know, we found our way eventually. 
I know, but you probably cried a lot. I cried a lot in that exact same oh my instance. Gosh. I was like, I can't do this. It's too hard. Yes. What am I doing? I'm out of my element, you know? And then at the end of the day, like many hours later, after t- when I finally figured it out and I got to where I was going, I think, and I was trying, this was a specific story. I was trying to see this big, big Buddha outside of Chengdu. And it took me so long to get to the Buddha that I was there for maybe a half an hour before I had to hightail it back to, to my <laughs> hostel. It took me so many hours to see this Buddha. And then, but then by the time I came home, I was like, oh, God, I can do anything. You know? Sorry, <laughs> Lee. And I bet, feel it. <laughs> I bet the story you tell the most is not of the Buddha, but your journey there. Yes. <laughs> Totally. And it was not. Yeah. In the moment, it sucks, but then afterwards, you're like, oh, yeah, worth it. So worth it. Look at me go. You know, <laughs> you, you really feel exactly. Like, like there's no there's no limits, and there really aren't any limits. We we impose limits on ourselves. You know, like there really isn't anything mm-hmm. that you can't do. It might take time and money and logistics, but like the, everything is possible. I believe. Yeah, and I think that that's really helped me, and I'm sure you can relate being an entrepreneur, is I say this all the time, I feel like I get up every day and I say to myself, I literally do not know what the hell I'm doing, but I just get up and do, because I think the same, travel has taught me through all those experiences that you that you have mentioned, the ups and downs and overcoming them, that you don't have to know, you just have to do it, just get in and, and get messy, and then be be open and willing to learn from the messiness and then things just kind of unravel and figure themselves out for you. Totally agree. I mean, I have this conversation with myself every twice a month when I have to send out a newsletter and I'm always like, I don't know if I can do it. I don't want to intrude on someone's inbox. What if yes. it's not well received? <laughs> what if I have a typo? I stress out about hitting the send button for hours, literally hours. Yes. And then finally I get to the point where I'm like, send the damn message. <laughs> Just it do it. Matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter. You know, like it's going to be fine. And, and, but it's, it's constant. And you, I constantly am like, am I doing everything backwards? Am I doing everything wrong? Sometimes it feels like it, but yep. you know, I know that my purpose on this earth is to be a creator. And so mm-hmm. my, that's, that's who I am. So if I just keep creating, knowing that some things are going to work better than other things, then I'm fulfilling my purpose, like what I'm here for. So send the damn email. Yep. <laughs> and I'm, send the email, guys. Get on, send the email, record the podcast, write the post, write the, the book ticket. even. Yeah. Just I do mean, it. Buy the ticket. Of, you kind of have to just, like, it's, it's like when – you know, we were younger and I feel like it's like the same feeling of like texting someone you like or like calling someone mm. that you like that, that butterfly feeling of like, Oh God, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I could, you know, and then you just have to make yourself do it. <laughs> and so now, yeah. now that I, I'm like proficient in this and I practice this, the art of actually doing it, it gets easier for me to tackle bigger projects because it's kind of like, whatever, just close your eyes and hit the button, you know, <laughs> like just throw yourself at it totally. because you will figure it out. And you are someone who actually amazes me probably more than anyone in the travel space, just from knowing you from, for many years and, and watching and seeing what you do. You are that person that acts on your dreams and your ideas I've never met anyone like you who'll have an idea and then two weeks later it's out and it's like man Kelly's done it again how (laughs) how is she doing this (laughs) yeah I I, so it's amazing talk to us about how like how do you do it because you you do you put out a lot of stuff I am a person who really values doing what I say I'm gonna do to like when it comes to other people in friendships or relationships and also in the relationship that I have with myself. So it's like Mm. if I have an idea, the first thing that I do is talk about it publicly because it keeps me accountable. Mm. Because I always want to be the person that does the things that she says she's going to do. So the first thing that I do when I want to do something is I talk about it I which I it. think is actually the opposite of how a lot of people will work mm-hmm. because I think sometimes we get ideas and we're scared to share them yep. because we'll be accountable or because we don't want someone else to take it or we have yep. this fear, you know, that 
it's not ready yet. And I think the, the thing that I've always done is just, I just talk about it first. And then because I've talked about it, that kind of like that feeling of, well, now I have to do it strikes me. And, and I like creating things. Like I like building mm. things and figuring out what they're going to you know look like and how they're going to function. And, and I think a lot of, you know, I mean, we met each other in like online many years ago. My first blog was called Travel Bug Juice. Okay. <laughs> I remember it. I remember I didn't it. know what I was doing, you know, but I was like, okay, let's start here. Right. So if you can get to, if you can start Travel Bug Juice, one day you're going to write a book called Tell Her She Can't. <laughs> So and sometimes you just have to start, right? You just have to do it. (laughs) Yes. That blog is developed. Yes, you do. And that's (laughs) oh my God. But it has evolved in so in so many other ways. Yeah, so true. And then it becomes hard because it's And so how you know, I love creating so much that I sometimes prioritize new things over my existing projects so that it's yeah, hard to balance I, yeah. right because you're like oh no but I haven't given any love to go girl lately or like I you know I'm not even thinking yeah. about women's travel fest and that's just gonna always be my struggle you know <laughs> so I just I just do the best that I can some days when I wake up and I feel inspired to start planning the schedule for travel fest then I will and some days it's like I wake up and I want to start planning mm-hmm. a new tour for Damesley. So I do. And then some days I wake up and I want to watch mm-hmm. TV. So I do. So it's really like asking yeah. yourself, what feels best to you today? And if it's too difficult to, yeah. if a newsletter is too difficult, then send it tomorrow. You know, like it doesn't always have to be so prescribed. Yep. So. Yeah, I love that way of thinking. And you don't hear people talk about it much. And I kind of follow that myself I have like the big vision I know what I'm doing and I have my ideas of what I'm going to do but generally each day I end up on this path I wasn't planning on being with and I guess I kind of I kind of say it's following the energy or following the path and usually I find like amazing things will happen once I follow that path like some some opportunity might come in just because I'm there in that moment doing that thing I didn't expect I was doing and it's it's kind of amazing to see it happen but you do have to be willing to let go of control and I think people aren't told taught that but I think it's very powerful and I think that's probably something both of us have learnt because of our travels and being caught in those uncomfortable moments over and over again and realizing there's not much you can do. Just stay present and go with the energy and the flow. Yeah, that's exactly it. And and it's also like figuring out what works best for you, right? Like mm-hmm. in, yeah. in my dream world, I would love to be the kind of person that has a Google calendar full <laughs> of every social media post I'm going to make and my newsletter is pre-written oh. and I spend one day a month doing all of this. That's not how I roll. Like no. I, I can't force yep. myself into that. I'm much more a fly by the seat of your pants kind of girl. You know, I'll get up on stage in front of 400 people with no idea what I'm saying before I would spend yeah. you know, like a week trying to craft a script. It's just not who I am. So you kind of have to just yep. pull yourself away from the boxes that you think you need to be in and operate from a place of what feels best for you. You know, the newsletter that I sent out today, I wrote this morning. Mm-hmm. So it's because I'm mm-hmm. just, I just can't, yep. I can't, I can't do it any other way. So, and that's okay. That's my yep. style. I know I've got, I've. that's right. You got to go. I've got the planner that I buy every year to plan out my social media (laughs) remains empty like it does every year but yeah you just and that's that's part of the journey yeah yeah you got to figure it out what's your style totally um yes you mentioned women's travel fest um a bit so we'll dive into that because that's obviously been on hold for you due to COVID um but it's a great conference that you hold every year and I love how your your focus with everything you do is is empowering women so this is a great conference for doing that so talk a little bit about that and where you 
see it going now because of COVID and, and will it be coming back Yeah, soon? so Women's Travel Fest has been going on for, <clears throat> we're going into our ninth annual year. So it's been going on for a while. It is hands down one of the best things that I've ever created. Um, and I, I never know if I did it the right way, right? Because I'm basically a one woman mm-hmm. show in, in planning it all. And it's a lot of work. But that weekend is so magical because it's kind of the only event in the travel industry that is there purely for the love of travel. It's not there to teach you how to travel blog. Yeah. It's not there to, you know, to teach you a skill. It's really there to come together and share our love and enthusiasm for adventure and to talk with one another about where Mm -hmm. we've been and where we're going. So it's this really magical vibe, right? Because everyone's there because they love the same thing so much. And so, you know, COVID happened. It's crazy. The last show was March 6th through the 8th. 2020 in New York City and the borders closed March mm. 11th 12th I mean we barely oh my gosh barely just got in got in and had so I known had I known yeah. the extent of what was coming I don't know that we would have run it but you know yeah right but then looking back it was like also the last no fun was thing that, that we then. all had, right? It was the last fun time <laughs> yes. that we all had and it was that last weekend. And so it was a beautiful gift in, in and of itself that it was able to happen. So the next show is, it is coming back. It's March 4th through the 6th, 2022 in Portland, Oregon. And I'm really excited about oh. it. Yeah. I'm super excited to be bringing the show to my new home of Portland, which I love and adore. And, you know, the Pacific Northwest is so special and I can't wait to share that. And I'm, you know, we're every single day in this pandemic, things are changing, right? So it's like, I think I'm yeah, pretty yeah. sure that it's going to be okay by March, you know, I, but I also thought I think so. <laughs> that we would be okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm hesitant to say like, it's for yeah. sure, but it does feel like every day, you know, we get more vaccinated, we take steps in the right direction. Um, Oregon has been a really locked down and safe state. So, you know, mm. I, I think that we can take the proper precautions to have a really great event and start talking about, you know, restarting, not just travel, but like our mm. own traveling spirits, right? Cause you know, I don't know about you, but yes. during COVID for me, it felt like I lost a part of myself. Because I like the thing that I love to do, the thing that I think that yeah. I am was gone and like was no longer accessible to me. And that was really hard. So now it's like, yeah. you know, it's not just that we can get back on a plane. It's like, you know, can we do that with pure love and adventure in the way that we did before? And so I think there's going to be a lot of things. To yeah, talk about. I think. There's a lot of great conversations that you can have around that. And I, I agree with you. I, I mean, I'm the same as you. Travel has been the focus of my life for like since I was 21. And to, to have it shut off like that, it was a huge identity crisis because my identity is so wrapped up in it. And also I think because when we're traveling, we're always out, we're always out meeting other people. And I think – I mean, everyone was shot off from other people, so everyone suffered from this. But I think interacting with other people is how we get to know ourselves because they kind of reflect back who we are. And when that was missing the past year, I mean, I was, I felt completely lost. I don't know who I am. I don't know who I am without the journey, the adventure, the travel, without interacting with strangers. And so I feel like people are reassessing so much in their life, but travel, I think, we may see it start to return to that more meaningful, purposeful travel, how we used to do it before the internet, you know, when no one knew us, we could hide and it was just about the travel. It wasn't about the Instagram likes or anything. It was just about the travel. And I think people are really going to be seeking that out more. Yeah, I think so too. And and I think, <clears throat> you know, the responsible travelers among us, we're always mm-hmm. asking ourselves like, you know, is is – 
not traveling the most loving decision right now? Or like, Mm. how can I travel, you know, in a responsible way and not, you know, create negative consequences for other people? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a really beautiful way. And I I wish that we had thought about that more in the past decade. It's Mm -hmm. like, what's, what's the repercussion, the unintended consequences and how can we mitigate that and, you know, create like the best, the best way I think to, you know, become a more loving person is to be around people who are not like you. Right. So I think traveling is a wonderful way of broadening our own, our horizons. And so, yeah, it's just, I think we're going back to a place of, of more intent and less, you know, I want to just go Mm. there because I want to go there, but it's more like, it isn't just about us anymore. Like it isn't just about you. It isn't just about me. Mm -hmm. Like we're part of a broader network. And I think the pandemic did illuminate Mm. that to me too. Yeah, it really did. Showed us how interdependent we are and how important our decisions are and how they do impact different people and what are we doing with our own lives to to leave a more positive impact? I yeah, think totally. Really important questions. You know, when the pandemic hit, especially coming post Travel Fest, I it is not an exaggeration to say that I didn't get out of bed for like 2 weeks. <laughs> Like I was yeah. terrified. I was terrified yeah. that I had gotten someone sick inadvertently. I was terrified that, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, I'm going to end up in the news. I, what have I done to my community without <laughs> realizing, you know, like all of these things. And then my businesses, how am I going to survive yeah. all of these like fear, fear, fear yeah. thoughts. And then <clears throat> after that, it's like, then I realized the opportunity, right? Cause I was like, well, I'm go, go, going mm. all the time this is like the first chance I've ever had to just sit still for a little while and get back into Mm. what my purpose is and what I can, what I can do with my potential, right? Like what else can I do? So that's when I thought, you know, Mm -hmm. this is a great time for me to write that book that's been living within me for a while. And and so Mm -hmm. it's really now when you look at it, it's like, I think that it really did do a lot of good things, you know? I mean, obviously yeah. not the devastating part of it, but I think, you know, in retrospect, that forced pause has been a gift in many ways. And we all need that for that pause, whether we have to have it forced upon us or not, but it is in the pausing that we are able to absorb everything we need to absorb so then we can create and you know that's the cycle of creation the cycle of life we have to move through the ups and downs so that we can create and you have done that now with your book and I remember that you were talking about it I think you were talking about it when we were with you in Portland and then I just saw you went bam as soon as the pandemic hit and I knew that you would finish it very quickly because I know that's what you do and it's coming out uh, June 29th. June 29th. And I cannot wait to read it, but I'd love to dive into that now because just going from me knowing you, but also going from what we've spoken to about today, it's all about tell her she can't and let her show what she can do. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about the book, the idea yeah. for it, what you're learning from it. how it can inspire people yeah so one of the things that I think I do well is name things (laughs) like I really love to name things so this name came to me like maybe three years ago when I was in the bath I was like in in the bathtub and I kept best place exactly I kept hearing (laughs) tell her she can't tell her she can't tell her she can't and I was like that is so my life motto like that is so my story and you know I I have been a creator for what over a decade now. And I've been Mm. in the press many times for many things, but really it's always like, Oh, she was a bartender and look, she funded her business or, you know, Oh, it's the business itself. But like, that isn't the true story of me and my life. Right. And like, you know, Mm. I, I grew up in such an environment where I was just constantly told that 
I was too fat and too stupid and that I wouldn't succeed and that I shouldn't try and that I wasn't worthy of it. And I believed those things in a lot of ways, but I didn't realize how those Mm. messages had rooted inside of me until probably my 30s. Mm. And then I kept realizing like, oh my God, do I really think this about myself? You know, because like, is this really how I feel? And so when I started writing Tell Her She Can't, at first it was just the story of resilience that is my own life of like giving everyone the middle finger and being like, screw you because you said that I couldn't do it. I'm going to do it. Like just to show you, yeah, you know, which I mean, totally. we don't ever really like, that's not an emotion typically shared by women or celebrated in women. Right. Like we're not socialized to yeah. be like, screw you. But I think there is the you know, tiger. Yep. Yeah. But when you come up in an in a environment like that, like you either choose to turn it into fuel or, you know, you choose to let it define you and your potential and where you can go. And I, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I just knew mm-hmm. that wasn't going to be my story. And the people who, you know, had hurt me the most were not going to win. And so that really Mm. became originally my like fuel to get myself into college, to get myself, you know, onto the mainland because I grew up in Hawaii to like get myself physically far away from my home. I moved out three days after I graduated high school. So I just couldn't live in my home anymore. Mm. Um, And so like, that's kind of the origin of it. And so I started writing down my story for this book. And then I started thinking like, but this is just my story. And how many powerful women have I met at Women's Travel Mm -hmm. Fest who have similar stories, who've gone through other forms of adversity and who've championed, you know, and really turned their lives around in spite of and because of it, right? So then I started thinking about Mm -hmm. other people. (laughs) So then I started reaching out to women that I knew who had done this and who really took that negativity and, and use it as fuel and momentum. And so then I put a call out on Haro, help a reporter out, just saying like, I'm writing this book about Mm -hmm. overcoming adversity. I got so many emails, (laughs) so many emails. So in total, I've now spoken to over a hundred different women who've overcome, I mean, so many things that I have not. And tell their stories Mm. of resilience and defiance so beautifully in, in sharing with them my own story, what I did not realize was that I was closing mm. the loop of my own trauma. Like this project gave mm-hmm. me a place to put that stuff, that trauma, that icky stuff mm-hmm. and give it meaning and transform it into something mm-hmm. that could be powerful, not just for myself, but for others. And so I didn't know how much I needed to heal or how much writing this book would help me to heal. Yep. But it really has become such a project of love. And the women, there's 35 women that I chose for this first book to be featured. And they are such badasses. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have um, we have love the it. oldest female BMX racer in the United States. Her name's Miss Kitty. She's 72 and still That's racing so cool. BMX bikes. Bike, bike. That I mean, is amazing. So cool. Oh my God. We, have, um, we have women who have, you know, I have a woman who became a black belt at age, you know, 69, even though she had brittle bones from beating cancer four times and she had, you know, osteoporosis. And doctors told her that she shouldn't even leave her house. And she was like, I'm not going to live my life that way. And she became a black belt like two times over. She's so cool. And it's just like, it's just all of these stories that I could not have foreseen. You know, women who've lost limbs, women who, you know, I have a story in there of a woman who took, took out a pizza box and a thousand pound tree limb came crashing down and broke her neck. And she suddenly realized, you know, when she lived, that she wasn't going to live her life in that same trajectory. So she had this opportunity to completely reimagine who she wanted to be and how she wanted to exist in the world. And it's just, you know, I mean, just so many stories of strength, feminine strength and resilience. And like, it, it will forever be, I think, my life's greatest work. Because these stories, being able to share these stories, is like so 
it means so much to me, you know? Yeah, I just had a, I just want to, I've got a question, but I just so wanted to say, when you mentioned your first book, I got goosebumps and in my head I thought chicken soup for the soul. So I have a feeling this is going to go in that direction for okay, me. Okay, so that's share that. kind of where it's going <laughs> because yeah. it started off as, I said, okay, I have far too many stories for one book. So I'm going to turn this yeah. into a series and then it turned into a podcast, which is dropping, um, oh my out. gosh, <laughs> which is dropping May 25th. So Dude, and the, you're amazing. I know the <laughs> podcast and then I'm talking, I'm talking to women who've like changed legislature, like women who've taken their own stories, their own experience with, you know, children who have type one diabetes and actually changed laws or autistic women who now mm. represent on the national level in Canada and are writing policy for other that impacts other autistics. Like it's so beautiful what we can do when we realize we can do anything, right? Mm -hmm. And like that our own gifts of the gift yes. that we have is who exactly we are and what our unique blueprint is and to see all of the ways in which they make not, you know, not their world or their community, but like everything around them better and me better. It's like it's it's become such a ripple effect and it would kind of be my the dream of my life to make like a cool badass feminist chicken soup for the soul so i think i know happen. gosh you could go into documentaries and everything yeah is so i know so i'm already working on the second book, amazing which is tell her she can't choose so women so who had to make pivotal decisions ah. um in sticky situations so yep. i mean and it just keeps getting bigger and then i get emails all the time like Oh, I'm, you know, I'm playing on a national women's basketball team. And I was always told that I would never even be able to, to dribble. And like, I get these stories and it's like, you know, it sucks when people tell you that you can't do something right. And that like, you're not, you're not, yeah. you're not the fit mm -hmm. for it. Like, it's not for you, but we yeah. don't have to listen to that anymore. Like we don't have to accept mm -hmm. that. And I think. I think that's what's cool about it. And are you finding with all the stories that you're hearing and diving into, are you finding there's any kind of common threads between the women and, and how they're going about making things happen? Like how do, how do you get someone who would be in the same situation who would go with the I can't versus the ones who go with the, well, I'll show you kind of mentality? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've noticed a lot of similarities, excuse me. You know, one of the things that I think surprised me most was how many women shared stories of being told they can't in school by educators. Mm. And that yeah. really, that really hurt me in my heart because I didn't realize how mm. pervasive that was, especially for women of color. I have a lot of, um, mm. women in the book, PSC women who were saying like, you know, I was getting straight A's and my teachers were telling me that I didn't, I wasn't good enough for college. Like maybe I should go get a job at McDonald's and mm. maybe I'll be a shift manager if I'm lucky, you know? And so that, oh, that wow. really, but they, but they didn't. Right. So, but instead they went to Stanford and started mm, their own yeah. tech companies and like, you know, they, they persevered. And I don't, I, that is the central question that I'd like to try and figure out is like, why, you know, what is it mm. that makes one person defined by this and limited by this and another person empowered and like motivated to kick the door down? And mm. I, I, I don't know that I have the answer to that, but I think that what it comes from is hearing these kinds of stories, right? And it's kind of similar to travel if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Like maybe yes. you'd never really thought about yeah. Malaysia until you met someone who told you how amazing Malaysia is and all the places that you should go and what you would love about mm -hmm. it. Like maybe you didn't realize that you could go to Stanford until you read the story of a woman who's exactly like you being treated exactly like you who kicked so much ass to go to Stanford and start her own tech company. And you see, hey, maybe this is my potential too. Like maybe I'm just not, maybe it's not in my field of yep. vision yet. And so that's, that's what I'm excited for, for this book and for, you know, this project in general is like, I would have loved to have something like this when I was in an environment that was super 
abusive and limiting, you know, where I was believing, like, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe I couldn't do it. I would love to read stories of people who've been told that same thing and who did anyway. And it would remind me that I'm going to get through it and that I can get through anything. So if that's like, if I can reach, you know, young girls in particular with these stories, I think would really be beneficial. Mm. But it's not even just young girls because it's it's women my mother's age who you know my mother was only ever told that she would be a housewife she never got the opportunity to even think mm-hmm. about a future or what she would want for herself so i think yeah. it's like i've i read stories about you know how our brains are kind of like lint traps right and sometimes it just is removing that little mm-hmm. bit of lint for you to see so mm. i want this yes. book more than anything, I don't care how much money it makes or how many sales, you know, it reaches. I want it to impact people who need it. Like I want, mm. I just want to share, you know, how, how I've finally told, figured out that I could and like how I'm continuing to tell myself mm-hmm. that I can, even in the hardest moments and how you can too and how they did too. And, and that's what's so great about it. Yeah, I think it's really powerful. As you said, it's the stories that show people what's possible because we only know what we know. And sometimes, you know, we've been able to branch or expand what we know because of our travel experience, but not everyone has access to that. So it's you can give it to them via this book. And so they can relate and see people who have been told they can't in the very various ways that others have experienced and just open that little door to yeah. show people the light that totally. it's possible. And I'm so thankful. And it was an intentional decision to be super diverse with this project. I mm. have women who restarted careers at 79, at 82, a woman who launched a YouTube channel at 82 that now has 4 oh. million views. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love it. Total badass. <laughs> I have women (laughs) with disabilities. I have, you know, I mean, like women who, who shared stories of intense poverty, women who were in foster care and, you know, who are now incredibly successful of their own merit. And I wanted to really showcase these stories because I don't believe that we all start at the same place. You know, we know, we know that. No me being born white, I have privilege. Like we don't all start from the same place, Mm -hmm. but we can get to incredible places by pushing, you know what I mean? And like owning that potential and letting yourself just, just shining your light, you know? And that's, that's kind of like how I feel about my own life (laughs) with entrepreneurship is like, I don't, I may not know where I'm going or what I'm Mm -hmm. creating next, but I'm going to keep shining that light. And if I keep chasing that light, I know that I'm I'm doing what I'm here to do. So I'm just so excited about And do you think the women that you've Yeah. Do you think that the women you've spoken to have followed that idea of shining their light? And do you think that was the most powerful? I'm guessing it is, but I know a lot of people just want tell me the steps, give me the practical, do X, Y, and Z. And I'm sure that we're all doing X, Y, and Z. But is it more a matter of just trusting and shining the light? Is that more important than the X, Y, Z? I think it can be a combination of both. And I I actually think that we're never, ever going to get to like an end point, quote unquote, you know, like Mm, we're always forever works in progress, (laughs) which sucks because you want to just be like, hey, I'm done now. You know, I I went to therapy for you. I'm good or whatever it is, right? So, but this book, I I share their stories um, and I was trained in journalism. So, you know, I didn't ask them to write their stories. I interviewed them and then I retold their stories with their permission. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of each chapter, so I also categorized these women into a series of power words that I felt best described who they were. So we've got change makers, Mm. warriors, trailblazers, champions, Um, And at the end of each of these sections, I have like the five takeaways. So Rita did this, you know, Alexis did this. So you can kind of use both um, methods to get where you want. And sometimes it's like, you know, they just, they listen to themselves and they tuned out negative noise. Sometimes it's like 
they loved themselves super hard or they developed a practice of of unshakable self-love, which is forever ongoing. Mm. <laughs> like, and I think, you know, oh my gosh, we're always all working so hard. On. So it's, yeah. yeah, it's hard to be like, yeah. this is the exact blueprint to be resilient and do whatever you want in life. <laughs> but I think, you know, yeah, I think there's this no project, such thing. It, it helps, right? It shares potential. So I, I don't, you know, personally, yeah. I don't want to do all the like... things that these ladies have done. They, they are so amazing. I have zero desire to start a tech company or, you know, like, we're, yeah. we're all on different paths. You don't want to go also. mountain biking at 72? You don't want to go mountain biking at 72, although I would with Miss Kitty because she's <laughs> so fun and funny. She's actually, um, I think she's, she's in North Carolina. Amazing. Yeah, she's so cool. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, it's it's like you. this, this might not be the life that you want. You might not want to, you know, be a – you might not quit BuzzFeed and become a top model, right? That might not be like your goal in life, but it's cool to yeah. hear that somebody else did because you're like, yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever find yourself just thinking like, yes. what if I was a dentist? You know, <laughs> like what if I yeah. went back to school to be a lawyer? <laughs> like what if, you know, and letting yourself dream sometimes gets yes. you to a place you wouldn't expect just by asking yourself, well, what if? Yeah. And I think, allowing yourself to do that like I always do that wouldn't it be cool if this happened and I kind of just imagine and throw it out there and it's amazing how many times that wouldn't it be cool if cool if thing has sort of come to me without my kind of interference and it was like oh that was pretty cool that was just something I was dreaming about one day totally and I think it shows the power of your dreams and not just the power of your dreams but having that openness like have your dreams, but don't follow it with a, well, I can't do that because. Just leave it open-ended. Wouldn't it be cool if, or yeah. what if, or why not? And then just don't follow it up with anything negative saying why you can't do it. Yeah, totally. Or, you know, just like, so another thing that I always do is I buy domains constantly. When I, I'll like name <laughs> Your domain head, collector. <laughs> I will buy the domain for that business that I named in my head and I have no intention of launching that business, but it's in, it's like stick a pin in it. It's there. Right. So then now yeah. when I have time, I'm like, Oh, what if I, what if I turn that in? What would it look like if I really did use that domain and turn it into something? So, you know, sometimes it's just, it doesn't all have to be right now, right? But you, you're just constantly thinking. Yeah, just put yeah. Those pins and ideas and pick them up later and see if they still match or I if love they still that. suit your energy. Yeah, I love that. That's a great way to do it. And then um, it's kind of like a public announcement too, sort of, because you've actually bought the domain. But as yeah. you said, you don't have to do anything for it, but it's kind of there. Totally, yeah. <laughs> to I, fall I'm, back on. I'm a big I'm a big believer in like taking that first step or, or sharing, you know, and I think that's also like how I've been able to build really such a beautiful community is because I'm mm. like, Hey, I'm just a girl who's, you know, got a lot going on and I'm flawed in a lot of ways, but I own it. I'm public about all of this. And like, this is how I'm starting yep. it. And it's literally from the ground up. So like, please help me, you know, and I will also help you. And so I think that kind of authenticity of like, I'm not trying to pretend that I've got it figured out or, you know, people mm. like you or other people in my community have seen me growing these businesses for 10, 12 years. So it's like a trajectory. And yeah. it doesn't, you don't just come out swinging with a hit right away. Usually. I mean, I don't know many people who have, you guys maybe are an no. exception to that because your blog has been consistently oh. awesome since day one um but you know it takes a while to figure out what the right path is and so I think just really owning that that journey and like strapping yourself in for the ride of that publicly and privately is the best thing that you can do totally and I think you find I think a lot of people as you mentioned are afraid to do it for various reasons but one is kind of uh, negative feedback I guess from people but I I think you find really how supportive people are yeah sure you're going to have your naysayers they're they're everywhere you learn to kind of ignore them and focus instead on those beautiful people in the world the hundreds and thousands and millions of beautiful people who are actually there to support and help raise you up totally yeah I mean 
it is scary creating. Like I think yeah. that's that's the very real side of it. And I know, you know, there are nights that I really can't sleep knowing that I'm putting out such personal stories into yeah. the world for anyone to read and critique and mm. rip apart if they so choose. But like if I remove all of that ego attached to it and I get back to the mm-hmm. core of my soul, my purpose here is to create. So if I create for creation's sake, then I'm doing it right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, I just got back to the final, yep. final round of edits and I could not sleep last night because mm-hmm. there are sentences of the book that will always keep me up that I will think about like, should I have rephrased mm-hmm. it? Should I have taken it out? Is there an unintended yep. consequence of this? Am I unfairly targeting anyone? Yes. You know, I think about all of, of the worst case scenarios. And I think it's hard now too, because we live in a world where anyone can say anything on the internet at any point in time. So like yeah. creating, you are a target for anything. But I just mm-hmm. have to believe that if you do it with your heart and soul, like it's it's for a purpose and it's going to be okay like one in one way or another you know yeah so i keep reminding myself that at two in the yeah, morning and I when think... i keep thinking <laughs> like, yeah. all these sentences, oh my gosh. These sentences in my head that i'm like oh, i don't know if i should have said the word elephant there yeah. like, you know like, you think about things that it's yeah. so weird and random it's like oh, who's going to come at me for that steve jobs quote like just things that you that oh, so, oh my no gosh going to but your yes. brain your creative brain is like it's yes just wild <laughs> it goes into panic mode totally yeah. but i think you know you know that your your intention is to create but also to create with the intention to serve and really help women yeah. um in particular and i love what you do with the work that you do is that you do include diverse voices and you've always been very intentional about that. And so I think what you're creating is really pure with great intentions that will really help. Plus you have that element of vulnerability in there. And I think that's how you really bring about change. That's how you really connect people because it's time for us to all stop the um, pretense that, life is perfect and and that we're perfect no we're all chipped we're all scarred we've all had things in our past that have hurt us and tried to stop us but it's your vulnerability that's going to show people they can rise above it yeah I think there's such I mean even just the connections that I've made with these women that I've been speaking with like I said Mm. like you know they in a lot of ways, they did me a favor by sharing their stories, but I don't think that they realized how much they inspired and healed me. Mm, yeah. And I hope, I hope that, you know, in kind of leading the charge by putting my greatest shames and insecurities on display right next to theirs, that it shows, you know, the power in that. And that we don't have to be Mm. anything other than who we are. And that we don't have to live a future that is anything less than what we dream for ourselves, despite anyone Mm. who might have told you otherwise. I love it. That's a really powerful way to end. Great (laughs) message for everyone to hear. But before we close out, I do want you to, tell everyone where they can get where they can find you and follow you but also get your amazing book tell us you can't yeah so you can find me at go kelly lewis pretty much all over the internet and you can find tell her she can't at tell her she can't.com i love it i can't wait kelly (laughs) so excited it's gonna be awesome i'm so excited i cannot wait to read it and thank you for joining me on this podcast and talking all about it and thanks for everyone listening thank you thanks for listening to this episode of the why travel podcast you can find show notes episode guides and resources at whytravelblog.com make sure to subscribe to our podcast for new updates and episodes on how to travel more and create better memories